This is um, really your wheelhouse here. What are institutions, how are they, maybe can you give, give us a picture, what have they invested in? I think they kind of took a big pause for the last year or so in allocations. What are they looking at? What are they, what are they talking about? Uh, yeah, I, I think I'd take a step back and say that uh, FTX last year, I, th I think, marked um, the peak in, um, uh, in, in private sentiment. If you look at the attribution of returns for uh, VC and private equity for many years, a lot of the uh, performance was coming from blockchain and crypto related private investments. Um, so I think that took the wind out of the sails, not just from a public uh, liquid token perspective, but also from uh, uh, the, the private investment side as well. Um, fast forward to today, I would say that uh, the largest headwind that we see in terms of allocating to the space whether it be from the liquid or private side, is, is really the regulatory picture. And uh, when will we have that regulatory clarity? Um, I, I think you know, the rest of the world is probably more bullish on crypto than, than the US for, for a lot of those reasons. Um, but also just the way that uh, we characterize you know, the investment um, in the room, um, we've seen more uh, investment professionals own it personally than, than they have actually for their funds uh, for, or their LPs. And, and when I think about some of the reasons why uh, I hear that, are it's, it's really twofold. It's one, um, that the asset class is still very new and uh, we're, we're learning how to invest uh, on, on behalf of investors. Uh, two, that the market structure is still evolving. Um, you know, the advent of an ETF would um, really help market structure. It would bring forth a lot new, a lot of new market participants, which I think we need um, just from a commercial hedging perspective, uh, market makers. Um, it, it would bring forth that institu institutionalization of, of this market um, that I think is going to be necessary. And then lastly, I would say um, when you look at the use cases, just even over the last three years that I've been at Coinbase, We've seen a number of different uh, use cases uh, come in and out of vogue as a result of what's going on from a regulatory perspective. And, and specifically, maybe we could just stick with you, Greg. What are the institu What are institutions? How are they invested? Um, are they invested through through tokens, through funds, through fund to funds? What is what does it typically look like? What is first step, second step, more diversified portfolios? <clears throat> sure. I would say that, uh, you know, looking backwards in the 2019, 2020 timeframe, a lot of the um, institutional managers looked a lot like VC funds, um, all with a, a, a long bias, um, all with very convex returns, but uh, not a lot of risk management. Today, we have folks like Chris who, you know, bring uh, a wealth of knowledge and, and, and real risk management um, and, and alpha generation to the space, which um, is a far cry from you know what it's been historically. I saw a, a stat actually that Galaxy posted that just 10% of the funds today um, in the crypto space, hedge funds, um, have uh, a track record going back before 2019. So you don't have um, a lot of funds with a, a huge track record here. But those that are, I think uh, it, it speaks to their ability to manage capital. So answering your question, I, I, th I see a lot of uh, family offices that are long um, spot in a lot of cases just for that long-term exposure. Um, we've seen uh, macro funds come in and out of the space either for directional exposure as a replacement for gold, um, depending on their view on real rates. Um, we've seen a lot of basis trading. Basis uh, has come in and out of vogue, um, but you have to be set up there to, to actually trade and take advantage. And then uh, I would say there's a lot of uh, crossover funds that will own tokens um, either by way of a, a VC distribution or as a long-term thematic play in the case of, say, ETH for a Web3 um, uh, uh, thematic position. Yeah, yeah. One point on on short track records. What's interesting? They always talk about crypto being in dog years, right? Like, worth eight years, eight years to one. So a three-year track record in crypto, <laughs> perhaps, is worth like a a twenty-year track record for a traditional long short equity fund. All the ups and downs and and uh, peaks and troughs are already in there. Um, 
Chris, can we continue this conversation just about institutions? Galaxy touches so many institutions. Uh, you probably talk to every investor and potential investor in, in digital assets all around the world. Um, what is the lay of the land today? How are uh, investors thinking about allocations to crypto? So if, if we would have had this conversation a month ago, I, I would say it's, it's still very bleak. Um, most people prefer to sit on the sidelines, um, a lot of wait and see, um, and a lot of people who just continue to kind of punt the decision. Um, and, the, and each you know, different institution or investor has their own unique reasoning from it's not in my benchmark to it's high risk, it's too much vol, we don't have any liquid capital to, to actually even commit right now. There's the gamut. Um, over the last month, I would say that things have definitely changed. Um, speaking to uh, some, some large institutions um, in the US where even the internal climate, they said, had gone from hostile to lukewarm. Um, and actually, we see it in our, our flow data as well. Um, they're, they're, the, the inflows have definitely started to pick up, and that is very much a recent phenomenon. I think people are starting to get a little bit more excited that hey, you know, Bitcoin is definitely here to stay. Um, this spot ETF isn't any longer about an if, it's just a matter of when. Um, and a lot of people are, are then just suspecting that, well, once Bitcoin is done, since Ethereum has a futures fund or ETFs already, it's only a matter of time until a spot, you know, Ether um, uh, ETF is available too. So, um, you know, there, there's a lot of different viewpoints into the altcoins that is still a little bit hazy. Um, there are definitely investors who say there's 20,000 tokens and a lot of them are nonsense. And I wouldn't sit here and disagree with that. Um, there is still a lot of nonsense out there because it's very simple for an issuer of a token to issue a token. Um, Unlike you know the tech boom and the IPO boom of the of the late 90s, you had a lot of regulatory hurdles you had to go through to be able to actually um, issue a security and IPO it. In crypto, um, it's unfortunately extremely easy, um, and this is one of the biggest issues that we saw was a lot of uh, fraudulent activity where people would you know promote these projects and uh, in crypto layman terms they're called rug pools they, they're not actually legitimate protocols so I think you know as we continue to move more into this regulatory clarity side it's only going to improve the institutional appetite and it will also protect investors from a lot of these projects that have been launched that are illegitimate and really shouldn't be getting capital. Um, but I am kind of excited that over the past, you know, 30, 40 days, um, the activity and interest in investing, um, as we've seen it, has, has turned pretty sharply. And Chris, you are an active manager? Right, so your strategy um, is in liquid tokens and equivalent to what a long short equity hedge fund would be doing. Um, uh, you're a coin picker to their stock picking. Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, can you tell me us a little bit more about the interest in your specific strategy? Because from my understanding, institutions, they, they, they're really comfortable putting crypto and uh, digital assets in the VC bucket. Because we all know how that works, the binary nature, the asymmetry of kind of setting it and forgetting it. And the very fact that crypto is so such a highly volatile asset class that uh, I'm sure you're doing a great job on risk management, but, but nevertheless, it's gonna be higher of all than, than, than bonds, right? Um, and it gets so much scrutiny in investment committees and we talk about the line item and why is this manager down 15%? Well, it's, it's got a sharp ratio of three and it's targeting of all of 20 and it's doing great actually, even though it's down 15. These are like more nuanced discussions that just get pushed under the rug when, when crypto is in a bear market, right? Um, so from my understanding, institutions are still, they still like the VC approach, they still like the private's approach. Um, but t talk a little bit about um, the evolution of the liquid side. I think why liquid has gotten a lot more airtime recently is because, um, you know, many people probably sitting in the audience know, uh, liquidity has a real value to it when you can't get liquidity 
in any other area in your portfolio. And to Greg's point, early on, the primary investment vehicles in crypto were in venture. And many of these funds had anywhere from seven to 10 year lockup periods. So even if you were amazing and invested in these funds in 2017, you haven't been able to really, you know, harvest profits from that. Um, you've been locked in this fund with the terms. I think the approach to crypto now is, okay, venture makes sense, as it should in any portfolio, but given the volatility in the asset class, we should have liquid buckets, either in ETFs or passives or actives, as long as they have uh, you know, no lockups and easy redemptions, to complement that venture. And that way, if we do get another crypto bull market and you know, asset prices are up a couple hundred percent, we can use that liquid sleeve to de-risk our crypto exposure and actually take profits on kind of the capital appreciation side. So it's a different way that investors are looking at balancing kind of an illiquid and liquid approach. Now, I do agree the altcoin side of things is still uh, very difficult. And there are a number of you know, great liquid managers out there, but they take more of a VC approach with the token. So it's much more smaller cap, um, illiquid side. You know, the way that we've structured our funds is, is much more blue chip um, and risk managed. We manage the vol of our fund to the vol of Bitcoin. Um, and we could do that with cash and options and other things. But it's trying to, to make sure that risk is kind of central to what we're doing, but also focusing on what we think are blue chip protocols that actually have a legitimate team, a, legit, a legitimate kind of pathway to, to future scale and, and future profitability as well.